Hey, sound check, sound check. Okay. Okay, let's go, let's go. Okay. Welcome all to the Master Leong Show. Oh, sorry. Today a bit of a rush uh, because quite a busy day for me. So welcome all to the Master Leong Show. Today we'll talk about Comfort Delgro. Because yesterday I did the deep dive uh, on the dividend investing. Uh, so more, more like a sharing. Then you all asked me about the Comfort Delgro. Then I see hey, the stock price dropped so much. It used to be a 2 3 dollar stock. But then now it's at one dollar plus, so I wanted to talk about it uh today. Also, welcome everyone. Let me read the comments. Uh, bitch, please, master, can I ask a favor? Can you wear a doctor gown? Why uh, buy some? Uh, bitch, please. I think you are asking for too much. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So last uh two session entertain you all uh, Talk a bit about dividend warrior. Now I just focus uh back on my the normal sharing uh. Uh, comfort they'll go. Yeah. So. Just want to investigate uh, whether is it a value buy, can it turn around or is it a gone case ready? Or oh, set always ready for ML stream. Yup, CH S E slow and steady currently in Malacca Streets. Next stop is Phuket. <laughs> Slowly go uh, but feels like the worst is over for S E. Yup, CH now is a uh, iPhone uh pay payback time. Radiation people will sell their. What? Buy XV? I don't know. Uh, yeah, so before I came in, I saw the news. China cut reserve ratio by another 25 basis point, but it's not included in my slides. Uh. Very rush uh, to, tonight. Yeah, Food Maggie's, good morning. Oh, how you doing in USA? David Wong, all green. Hopefully, bull market for China. Because they keep stimulating. Uh. Uh, the CCP seems very determined to find a bottom. Yeah, Atlantas, welcome, welcome. Huh? Okay, skip some of the comments. Yeah, nowadays a lot of uh, chat, so I just take the important one. Co uh, Chong Costa, good evening, good evening. Okay, so let's go, let's go. So uh, a bit of update on the China market. So Europe now seems to want to implement tariffs uh, on China, but they want to investigate whether China is subsidizing the EV players. The short answer is actually yes. The, the past few years, uh, EV players they actually had uh, subsidies. Uh, for example, when they sell in, in China, or uh, the consumers get a subsidy. That's why uh, they can sell at such a low price. But as of two zero two three now, this is the last year of the EV subsidies. Uh, next year onwards, the totally there will be no subsidy from the Chinese government. Really, all these EV players they will be very competitive. They will be using pricing strategy, and their quality is very good. So I believe only that the top 5 or top 10 will succeed. Uh, many of them will actually go bankrupt and we will see a consolidation. So everyone is betting on what they think will be the winner. Like BYD, Lin, Xpeng, Neo, all this. They still get a lot of funding. Like Xpeng, we see that the DD and the Volkswagen, they are interested to partner with Xpeng. Whereas others, they are not getting uh, much partnership. Yeah, so... Uh, the European Commission right say that the market is overrun with cheap Chinese cars kept artificially low by huge said subsidies. So it might take uh, up to 9 months for this investigation after which they were gonna definitely I think they're gonna slap some tariffs uh, of 27.5% uh, similar to those imposed on the US. So US have tariffs then Europe also have tariffs so basically it's the nationalism uh, that means they reject Chinese goods and they prefer to use their own goods uh, and support their own players because uh, a lot of these European car companies they cannot keep up with the competition they are still stuck with the ICE car their EV technology is not advanced that's why Volkswagen panicked and took a 5% stake in uh, Xpeng so China you can see uh, that there are sales to Europe or uh, the new energy vehicle EV cars or exploding also uh, uh, from 20 to 21 four times 21 to 22 uh, double 22 to 23 most likely or uh, this is like maybe a 50 percent growth lah. maybe by the year end is 800k like that also so so that's very strong growth so uh the soft bank will be in play uh tonight likely it will trade much higher lah. so it was 12 times oversubscribed 
They could have priced it at uh, fifty-two dollars above the range, but Masayoshi San don't want to spoil the party. He want to keep it stable so that it can rally strongly on the first day. So the one dollar to him is just hundred million difference. So it's it's not say super big uh, not say like billions of dollars. Hundred million, he feel is okay. So in the end, they took the fifty-one dollar pricing. Also, uh, it's better to leave the additional one dollar per share. It's better to take. Uh, 51 then to take uh, 52 or uh, it's equivalent to 1 billion in value uh, due to the 1 billion outstanding shares but the seller is actually a uh, soft bank themselves they sell a 10% stake at uh, $51 so if they get one more dollar it's only worth 100 million because that's the 10% stake yeah so uh, so it's actually 100 million so based on the projection is that if they keep it at 51 there's more upside on the first day and it could project it could trade between 57 to 62 so tonight it's gonna explode so let's say it trade at uh, 60 dollars uh. so that's up 20 percent really first first night can be up 20 percent so very explosive uh. i think it will trend upwards uh, towards the 80 dollar level before crashing down to earth so we see how it goes so tonight my main sharing uh is on the grab and comfort they'll go so one shot i cover my entire sharing that then i come back to chit chat with you all so for grab right last night it was down uh eight percent but close closing down six point eight only so what's what the negative news so year to date uh is flat Pre previous announcement of their results it was actually a positive surprise uh surprise when they say that they will be profitable in the third quarter instead of the fourth quarter fourth quarter they bring forward the profitability guidance so that was positive but the negative news is that now they are facing regulatory risk <clears throat> suppose the singapore government wants to review the right industry and singapore is uh, a very big market for grab because singapore our spending power is much stronger as compared to countries like singapore uh, like malaysia indonesia thailand all those uh, singapore is the highest spending power is their biggest market so uh the way the taxi and ride hailing operators conduct their business through the availability of rights is being reviewed by the authorities to ensure that service stays relevant as commuter needs and the industry evolve yeah so uh there's actually a lot of customer complaint singapore government is like that one they don't take any action until there's a lot of complaint so for the layman right what they feel is that during peak hour the prices are insane well, like normally $20 that during peak hour can go to $40, $50 so it's a supply demand issue and during the like uh, off peak hour or uh, let's say all those very dead at 2, 3 a.m. that time or can they still get a ride or not so they, they want a rebalancing uh, of the supply and, and demand but I think by right you should just let the market forces decide it's not wise to, to regulate it but I think this is a wrong move by the government, but it's negative uh, to the right healing operators because this will be an increased cost. Yeah, the review due to be completed by the second quarter of 2024, so half, half a year more. Lah. So they now already in the end of the quarter, so they, they need uh, three, three quarters to do it. Yeah, so, uh, so three years ago, they actually had a framework for right healing, like the a private driver you must go for course get the license all this so they actually started the regulation and that's a good thing so that it prevent like crimes or you make sure that the operator is not someone with a criminal record or have mental illness or this so that there must be some basic uh, background check before anyone can be a grab uh, rider so the three points that they want to address is the improving the stability of supply of taxi and right healing services such as late night hours when there is a right short shortage uh. so that like, not not many people want to work between like 3 to 5 a.m yeah so how to balance out uh, the, the supply yeah the answer is very simple you just raise the prices uh. if it's 50 dollar one trip i think a lot of people will want to be a driver at those like very late hours yeah that ensure that service can be provided with minimum destruction uh, disruptions and uh down downtime yeah so basically it uh they see right healing uh, as part of the public transport like the smrt or this 
or they don't want disruption, they don't want uh, downtime, they must be 100% uh, uptime. So uh, there are situations where you uh, too many people, example there's the F1 racing, the roads are blocked, then you try to get a right, grab, you can't grab, but all the drivers are resting at home, they don't want to be involved with the jam or this. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't think it's wise uh, to, to regulate and, and set rules for this. I think let the free market decide is better. The only thing this one is uh, for the wheelchair user and family with young kids. Uh, because like if you have young kids, you must have the baby chair. So the uh, taxis, usually they, they keep it in the booth. Then for private hiring, they, they're lazy to deal with this kind of uh, audience. Uh, or because it's like, is very so-called troublesome. It's not worth earning the extra money. So they avoid serving people who are wheelchair or, or those that with babies. Yeah, so this this part I think is useful. Uh, there must be a standardization so that this, this group is also served. So of the three points, I only agree with the top points uh, that needs to be regulated uh, and addressed. Uh. The other two should less let the free market uh, decide. Uh. So now the LTA, the Land Transport Authorities are in talk. Uh or with big grab, go jack or comfort they'll go, all this they are speaking with them uh, to come with a solution. So uh in recent news like one month ago or, or two months ago, July uh, July uh Grab announced to acquire Transcap. So that's the third largest taxi operator. So I don't like this move. Uh. It means that Grab from a platform company, a, a set light company is gonna be a set heavy. So what they are trying to do is that because they are in a rush to be profitable. So the taxi business is already profitable. So this will boost their P&L. So it's a big like accounting trick. Lah. Then operations wise is that they can use the, all this uh, car for lending. They let, they, because the taxi model is basically you are like a landlord. You buy the taxi, you have the rights to own the asset for 10 years. And these 10 years you keep renting out. You earn the monthly rental from this taxi driver and this taxi driver they, are, uh, they will tap into your the grab app for the right healing so in singapore the three main app is like uh grab gojek and comfort they'll go app so transcap all this they, they are slowly dying really so i think they are very happy uh, to be acquired so this, this is a win for the trans transcap uh. or let me say, say hi to you all before i continue the deep dive on the comfort they'll go Okay, SEP, SE or BABA, which one is better? Both is different. Ah. BABA is more like a value play, then SE is a high growth tech. Yeah. Jojo, welcome, welcome. USA also got subsidy. Yeah, USA <laughs> subsidizing Tesla, all this. Then the Chinese EV players, they don't get the subsidy. If Tesla, they sell their car, the, the consumers can get $8,000 rebate. So, of course, they want to buy the Tesla. They don't want to buy the Chinese car. So the Angmoor, they all play cheap one, uh, US and Europe. They are just siding with their own company. Uh. The Chinese players, they are, the EV cars are higher quality and much cheaper. They, just that they cannot face the facts. Uh. Ah, yeah. that, that's very bad. Empty Pals, welcome, welcome. Okay. Shinkansen, oh, already. Uh. J Japan, all the train, all very old already. They need to do an upgrade. Then they need to be like China, uh, China like that. But the problem is the China, right? The push is more from the government. Whereas Japan, right? A lot of the different lines is owned by different company. So or crisscross here and there, that the MRT map is very confusing one in, in Japan. Very messy. I always get lost. Yeah. Uh, except China too much resources to compete. Baba is the right play. Baba is more solid and steady. La. SE is more high risk, high returns. Freddie Wong, Grab take 20%, too much. La. Yeah, because they have almost a monopoly. So it's also a bit unfair. So they really feel that there's regular key risk. That's why they hire the Tampei Ling. But Tampei Ling get too, uh, too much backlash from the public. That's why she resigned. Now go to other uh, tech company already. Yeah. Vivian Ng, sadly can't go to KDV for my trip. Ah. Wow, you dare to go, ah. not scared your wife kid catch you. Ah. <laughs> Someone you say here with your daughter, Vivian Ng, see your comment. <laughs> yeah. Next time can even lock your house from the phone. Everything digital already. Yeah, Vincent Ong, good evening, good evening. Yeah, so okay, next part, uh, which is the main part, ah, talk about the comfort they'll go. So 
Yesterday I was doing the sharing of why the dividend investing sucks. So uh, for Comfort Delgo, right? Uh, it used to be like a two dollar plus stock, like two forty, two sixty, that kind of stock. Huh? Uh, the pre COVID lah. So in like two zero one seven, two zero one eight, Comfort Delgo start to face competition. Uh, from the grab, and from there is a downward spiral already. So the price more than half. So the question is: Is Comfort Delgo a value buy? Is it undervalued? Is it a buying opportunity? In the past, Comfort Delgo used to be like a favorite because it's a blue chip company. Then, uh, people have a lot of banks and REITs already, so they want to diversify. So they will buy uh transport counters like Comfort Delgo, food company like like Sets ah Sets is the airlines and food, but Sets also cannot make it. Sets also very bad, but that's uh, uh for another day. Then uh so. Like maybe SGX uh, also to diversify. So, uh, Comfort Double was a popular dividend play. It used to give like five percent dividend like that one when it's like like ten cent dividend if you buy it at two dollars that, that kind of thing. But now it is half. Then the earnings and dividends have also crashed due to the pandemic during the lockdown period two zero and two one earnings was very bad. So you see revenues like from O eight until two two the past five years revenues basically flat. There's no growth. In two zero two zero, you see the lockdowns, the earnings totally crash. Why? Because of the uh taxi business. Because we in lockdown, everybody is at home. Nobody need to take taxi, and uh, even the public transport also less people want to take. Yeah, so totally. Or uh, in two zero two zero, it was a crisis, and now they are slowly recovering out from it due to the reopening, and also tourism is back. People. Oh, we'll take the taxi. The tourists ah will wait for the taxi lah. So how many of you all will wait for the comfort cab? For me, it's like many years already. If I want uh 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 to take public transport, I just use the Grab app. But I also delete the Grab app already. I mostly take MRT or bus ah. Master is poor man. Then earnings per share, same thing is on a recovery. Two zero two two. The earnings is a bit abnormal because they actually sold a property to book a thirty million gain. So I'll talk more about that. Net asset value. It's pretty much flattish, ah. Uh, oh, so so now it's trading at about one times book value. The stock price is one point two five now. The book value is about one twenty. So so about there. It's about one times book value. Oh, uh, so the question is, is it undervalued? So for the fundamentals, right? Most of their revenues still come from Singapore. Fifty eight, almost sixty percent of their revenues come from Singapore. So Singapore is their key market. Then. For their uh business right, there's many segments, but the two most important one is the public transport, which is your bus and MRT. Then the second one is taxi. So this two is the main contributor. So taxi, you know now, is the comfort they'll go. So public transport is under SBS Transit. Oh, so like you take the MRT, there's the blue line, purple line. Oh, that's under the uh uh SBS. Whereas uh SMRT, oh, is the red line and the green line. Also, I don't like red line and green line. Very slow, very old. And in the past, a lot of problems. But ever since they've been privatized, nowadays seldom see the breakdown already, lah. So the model of public transport have shifted already. Basically, the government owns the asset. Then these operators like SMRT and SBS, they operate, ah, and earn a small margin. Also, they have a long term contract. So public transport is the one that attracts me the most. Whereas taxi is more like a landlord. You buy the taxi. You have the COE for ten years. You have the license for ten years. Then you rent it out, or and you get the monthly income from the taxi driver. So like uh, engineering, uh, service and the inspection. This is the VCOM. Ah,、uh, also the driving center. VCOM is also a listed company. So both SBS and VCOM they are, they are listed, but they are thinly traded lah. So they are more like a subsidiary, but this forms a very small portion lah. So I, I won't talk about it. Ah,、uh, so. Of all the countries, right? Uh, what we want to understand is, are they heavy on public transport or taxi? So for like uh UK, right? Uh, they're actually very heavy. Like UK and China, these two markets, they're actually heavy on taxi, which I don't like. I don't like taxi because they are facing uh competition from ride hailing operators. Like in UK, they have to compete against Uber, and in China, they have to compete against TT. Whereas Australia, I like it because uh, it's mostly the public transport, like running the bus routes or this. So bus route, like you bid, you win, then you operate the bus route for like five years or seven years that one. So your cash flow is, uh, very predictable. 
So of all the businesses, I like the public transport business. I don't like the taxi business. So for the first half results uh, this year, right, revenues uh, came down a bit. So so that that's a bit of a, a, a negative. Uh, as compared, it's a negative a bit as co- compared to the second half of last year. But first half over first half is a bit flattish. Yeah. So the important thing is look at the profit. You notice that last year in the first half, the profit 115 million right, is much higher than this first half of 78 million because there's a one-off item. So you see here, first half uh, 2 2 includes exceptional gain, the disposal of Amperton property in London for 30 million. So and it was uh, distributed out as a one time uh, special dividend. So the, the earnings is a bit uh, distorted in that sense. Yeah, but if we compare right the revenues right it's actually down uh three three point five percent yeah so this is uh also a pressure on the business uh. the thing you you realize that how that world, there's no growth right? revenues is flat all the way the thing is that is they cannot raise price or uh, much also like you take the bash or mrt right it's still like one dollar pass because the the price increase is mostly controlled by the government yeah, so you, if you increase your public transport, the price by 10%, people will complain. So usually you can only increase like 2 3% every year. So the revenues cannot grow much uh, organically. Uh, but we look at the two businesses, uh, public transport and the taxi. So public transport is like you operate the bus and, and the MRT. The margins you see is super thin. Uh, the operating margin is just 3.7%. Uh, so... Uh, like uh, the operating profit here is distorted uh, due to the one one off games, one off uh, gains. So the second half of last year compared to first half of this year, more or less uh, stabilized already uh. So the one thing difficult about public transport uh, is uh, managing your costs, because energy prices are going up. In the first half, oil is still at seventy dollars. That's okay. But now in the second half, two zero two three, oil is going to eighty dollars, then ninety dollars, and even might come up to hundred dollars so you run your be it your train you need electricity you run your bus you need petroleum also all this is increased cost then the second part is also labor cost it's hard to get labor uh. so you see a lot of them they will hire foreigners like malaysia or china bus driver like like local singaporeans nobody want to work uh, in the transport industry do you want your children to be a bus captain so it's very difficult to hire so they have to pay like three thousand plus uh, that then then maybe they can maybe can get a bus captain so this the cost is ever increasing yet yeah, it's very difficult to pass the cost uh, to the consumer because all this is regulated by the authorities so they review the public transport the, the pricing every year yeah so your margins are, are super thin taxi uh, in the past uh, is actually the cash count because in the past comfort they'll go right or dominate the taxi industry they have like 60 70 percent market share so they were like a monopoly so they are like they are like meituan or in the past but now they are being disrupted uh, by the right healing so they don't have the pricing power already so last time the taxi wow so attitude uh, they are wow, very attitude then if you you wave them then they stop in front of you you give them a location that's very near they don't want to uh, send you there or if it's inconvenient they say, I don't, want to, I don't want to take you. Then they just write off. Now uh, you wave them, uh, wow, all they rush to, to get your business. Uh. Times have changed already. Uh. Our taxi no longer king of the road already. So one thing you notice is that first half of 2-3, right, the operating profit almost doubled from the first half of last year. So we are seeing that uh, now there's the boom uh, in the reopening. So there's a lot of tourists c- coming in. Because local... Singaporeans, we don't use taxi one. Ah. We don't use taxi one. It's the tourists that will wave for the taxi or go and uh, go to the taxi stand, or that. Yeah. So the margins is now uh, back to normal already at uh, fifteen percent. So uh, I do see a rebound ah, in, in the earnings, uh, uh, for 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 this year. But worry is on the cost side lah, because like the petro- the petroleum cost all this. Yeah. So. Uh, but mostly you operate more like a landlord. You should think of the taxi business more like a landlord. Lah. 
you own the taxi fleet, then you land it out. That's why Comfort Delgo is also a, a set heavy business. That's why it's trading at one time uh, book value. In the past, it used to trade as much as two times uh, book value because it can derive a high return on equity. And the high return on equity comes from the taxi business. Or they, they can make like 20-30% margins also possible. So what you mean by, by margin? Mean, margins means that if I buy the taxi plus the COE all this, then I able to rent it up at, uh, at a much higher price. Uh, then, then my margins are higher. But now because the, the driver can choose, do I want to be a taxi driver or do I want to be a private hiring driver? So you have to compete in price. So you, you cannot set your rental too high. Otherwise, the, the, the driver will just shift over jump over to grab or the go jack then balance sheet wise they're actually holding a lot of cash the net cash in their balance sheet is about 600 uh, and last year was 650 million this year the cash is less 550 million or oh, they paid a special dividend last year after selling their property so uh, what 500 million is about 20 percent of their market cap their market cap is about 2.5 billion now uh, also one, one fifth of their market cap is in cash so they are very cash rich uh, so one thing i like about this is that they are a cash cow the taxi business the uh, public transport business is a cash cow because it's very cash generative people bought your taxi they, they pay cash immediately you receive the cash uh, everything the consumer pay you uh, straight up front uh, nothing is owned same like supermarket business all this yeah you get, get it up front in fact, uh, uh, like the taxi driver also, they pay you rental is almost daily. Some taxi driver, they pay their rental is daily one. Yeah, so it's a very cash generative business. So since they generate so much cash, the big question is what is the dividend yield? So in the past, people, you buy Comfort Delgo, you want like 4 or 5% dividend yield. But because their earnings is now only slowly starting to recover, you see that uh, their dividend payout during the COVID period, they're very conservative. They lower it down to 50% payout ratio. But now they shift gear. They go back to 70% or even 80% uh, dividend payout ratio. So in 2022, uh, they paid a special dividend uh, of almost, I think, about uh, 4 cents like that. And the full year dividend is oh, slightly more, more than 4 cents. So for the 2023, they already paid an in interim dividend of 2.9 cents. My expectation is that full year, right, they'll make about six cents, and if we take a eighty percent PR ratio, eighty percent PR ratio, that's four point eight cents at the current price of one point three, one point two five. That's about three point eight percent dividend yield, lah. So, is this attractive? My answer is no, lah. I rather buy banks or REITs. You can get lah, easily five or even six percent dividend yield. So the dividend yield is not attractive. So in fact, there might be further downside. It might come towards that one dollar level, or so. Especially if the Fed's uh, raise rates, hike the rates uh, by another one or two hike in October. So there's actually quite some downside to comfort their growth. So it, it's not a buy for dividends. It's not a buy. So should you consider buying a uh, comfort their growth? My answer is if you buy, it's more of a special special situation play, meaning that. Your ideal situation, okay, so when you buy a company, right, there's two ways to make money. One is dividends, another is capital gains. So the dividend yield is too low already. So you only buy if there's a possibility that you can get additional bonus of capital gains. So can the revenues and earnings grow at 10% every year? The answer is no. Huh? So that's why you see revenues is always is very fetish. So there's no growth in that sense so there's no growth there's only dividends then it's not a buy but the bonus is that there's a chance that it might be bought out also that's why it's called a special situation so like in the past smrt also faced the same thing smrt mostly their train keep breaking down and they do a lot of restructuring and they do a lot of uh, cost cutting they still cannot improve the revenues earnings very flattish and the public keep complaining. So in the end, Temasek offered one dollar sixty eight, and took uh, SMRT private. SMRT used to be a two three dollar stock also, yeah, and it used to have like twenty percent ROE. So the uh, we saw that Grab uh, bought out the 
uh, transcap uh, transcap. So I think number two player is the city cap. So number two and number one, either of them uh, either comfort double or city cap, they 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 can uh have a chance to be bought out or buy a competitor. Also maybe go to. So why go to will buy it out? Same thing. What's go to? Well, basically go jack la. Well, go to got two business. Toko builder is the e-commerce business. Go jack is the right healing business. So go jack same situation as the grab. They want to turn profitable this year. So if they buy comfort they'll go. It's not expensive la. The market cap two point five billion. They offer three billion. Uh, take it private. So it's already profit making. So immediately it put it under go jack. Gojek immediately will turn profitable, so they can bluff their investors. So it's the same thing as what uh, Grab is doing. Grab buy the transcap, pull it under the right healing business as they're doing the rental, then immediately it turn profitable. So yeah, because all this, they are so desperate uh, to be profitable. Because, because of this situation, that's why I would avoid uh, uh, buying, buying Grab. I still prefer SE uh, for their organic growth. So this is more like uh, acquisition, which is in organic growth. Then a second thing is that because like uh, mainly grab by the trans uh, tr transcap right is for the taxi business, but Comfort Delgo also has the public transport business. So does it have any synergy with a company like Gojek or uh, Tokobide? My answer is yes, because uh, Gojek right has Tokobide, so they can do like e-commerce also so what i give you an example like you go you use an app called carousel or you go to facebook marketplace and you want to buy let's say a handphone casing or a power bank it's a second hand one uh. so how will you make the deal usually it cannot be you ask the person come to the house or you go to the person house because you you're afraid of refusing your address so usually you meet at the mrt station to strike a deal am i right you meet at, at the mrt station the person pass you the product you give person the cash so MRT stations, right, or even bus interchange is a very good place to do a transaction, and that is called e commerce. Yeah, so can you imagine that? Let's say you, you online, you order things, then when you finish work, as you pass by the MRT or the bus interchange, you just go to the locker, you just scan your app, then you unlock the locker, or you can get your food, or you can get the power bank that you order, or you can get the uh, water bottle that you order from online. So instead of delivering to your house, you, you just put it there uh, at, at the locker box. So they have the locker box uh, in uh, the heartland areas already. So they can also do the same thing for all these like the bus interchange and MRT. So there is some synergies, uh, but this is like very futuristic looking. Uh. So the only reason uh, that you want to buy a company like, like Comfort Delgo is that you believe that you get a low dividend, but there's a high probability that you it can strike a deal and sell itself off. For me, I'm not an uh, expert enough to say that oh, hundred uh, percent uh, comfort that will, will be sold away to uh, the Gojek. Yeah, I, I I don't know how to calculate the probability uh. But if so, for me, right, comfort that is not a buy call. But if you purely buy it just for the dividends, you will be disappointed. You must buy it. For the dividends plus, there's a probability that it can be privatized, so that someone might offer one also one sixty eight or one eighty eight for comfort delgo. Then you get a one time huge, uh, capital gain. Uh, so so that that's the play. If, if you believe that can happen, then it makes sense to buy comfort delgo. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to buy comfort delgo because the dividend yield is just way too low already, and it's a dinosaur company now. And when you see your uh, Singapore market, right? all these the bullshit companies, when they start to pay like 80% or 90%, 100% of their earnings as dividends, it means that there's no growth opportunities really. That means they are dying really. They pay all their earnings out as dividends. They, they have no place to invest in. They have nowhere to grow really. Because they are being cannibalized or by, by the new players like the Grab and the Gojek. So, but for me, right, I don't want to invest in dinosaur companies. I want to invest in the companies of the future that can keep growing, like the Shopee and the Lazada. Yeah, so, but there's nothing wrong. Uh, if you don't understand e-commerce, you don't understand technology companies, then you don't touch them. Or let's say you are 60 years old, you are retired. You want to live off your passive income. 
Yeah, so like AK47, he used to be a big shareholder of ComfortDelGo. I think last year he sold some shares. Uh. So bro, I do this, before I do this video, I also did some reading. Or I just searched for ComfortDelGo, other people that cover it. Then AK got also talk about it. Uh. So he, he reduced uh, uh, quite a, a lot of his the ComfortDelGo shares. Uh. So probably he, he sold at a loss. Yeah, but he sell at a loss, right? He, he sell at a loss. He don't... Uh, tell you that like, he lose how much or what yeah okay so next uh the last part oh which is a meme oh ah sweet la. taxi uncle so, so when we see what take taxi right usually we have a lot of bad experience or oh, our bad experience is like ah yeah the taxi driver very attitude la. but sometimes there is also kindness la or oh, in the, the for the all this uh Taxi driver, you see this one. After taking a cab from Ishun to Pioneer, guy named Daniel realized that he didn't bring his wallet along, and he went to tell the taxi uncle about this. Not only did the taxi uncle allow Daniel to transfer him the money later, he even said this: "Uncle, lend you thirty dollar first, just in case you need money to eat your meal later." So Daniel, who has been working here for nine years, said he has never experienced so much kindness here before. So not only the taxi driver let him uh, pay later, right? Uh, even lend him money. Uh. Wow, so this is a miracle. Uh. I've never seen such a kind taxi uncle before. Uh. So usually, my experience taking taxi is very bad. Uh. So so uh, <laughs> so the taxi industry got destroyed. Uh. I don't feel surprised la. Yeah, they really lack in, in the service la. Yeah, so now they are being disrupted. So like you take the right healing, they must give you good service la. If the service is no good, then you don't give them the five star rating la. Yeah, yeah. So that's all my sharing for tonight. Uh, so feel feel free to give me your comments and feedback. Okay. Okay. Ay. Okay. So let me go through comments. Master will become CEO of Baba uh, Groceries. You mean what? The fresh hippo? Oh. I think yesterday I exposed the dividend warrior he's angry or something. Today I get a lot of the nonsense call. Got people, I think got someone exposed my handphone number or what. I keep getting random call from people wanting to collect bicycle from me. <laughs> but I just silence my phone all the way. But do note that if you let that play expose one right and any house uh, post people number right. Uh, is is something that is is a criminal offense la. Oh, so I see how severe it is la. So I might make a police report. I say that on the forum people post my number, or asking me, and to make pranks on me or whatever la. Yeah. I don't know if dividend warrior or those uh toxic Tesla trolls la. Whichever la, whatever la, whatever. La. That's why today I I'm in a bad mood also la. But okay la, I just share la. So it's not easy la, being an influencer. La. You attack people, people also attack you. <laughs> but maybe la, because uh, I think Dividend Warrior, his number was also exposed online. Yeah, so people might also go and disturb him also. Yeah, so disturb here, disturb there. Uh, what goes around comes around. La. That's why to be an influencer is not easy. La. It's not, uh, there will be haters for sure. La. And they will do all sorts of weird things. La. That's why. You all ask me like, oh master, I want to meet up or not. Master, I want to do telegram group. So there will always be all these very weird, funny people that, that want to attack me one. That's why I have to be very cautious. I cannot like anyhow give anyone my the contact number or what. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah, so irritating. I, 
Rotty Boy. Yeah, I now getting a lot of nuisance call. I, I can't even read the comments uh, of my live stream. Eh. Cause people keep calling me. Eh. <laughs> I, that's why. Don't know who go and expose my handphone number. Yeah, then I keep getting the, 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 the prank call. You see, example, I, I, I pick up this call, you see, yeah, like Joey. See, you see, I, I do the voice. Hello? Hello, I was at the 我在你家那边那个柴区这边柴区对哦我看你去错地方了对对对是有人乱乱放我的号码 okay, see, you see, I help up you all right. so, uh, I don't even stay in Chai Chi, I stay west side uh, I think anyhow people post uh, That's why Very dangerous uh, Online There will always be people who want to attack you yeah, So just, just be careful uh, yeah. I think maybe someone using my number to run a scam or what. See, got, got this person uh, keep calling me. Uh, let, let's have a special episode today. We investigate what is going on. Let me see. Then I use the speaker. Let's call this person. This person keep calling me. I think the same thing. Want to get bicycle. Hey, what a missed call? I got a missed call? Yes? 一样啦一样的人啦 then people say, oh, I give you a free bicycle, call this number to collect your free bicycle, then randomly put an address. La. I even changed my address already, now my this place, nobody know. Last time I actually stayed the Jurong Gateway, then uh, got people expose my address la, at Jurong Gateway. Got, got people come and find me, you know, they come and hunt me down at the Jurong Gateway. So, uh, online, right, it is like, uh, some people are very sick, uh. some, some people are very evil one ah. Plus, my personality is like that la. People, they, they either really love me or some people will, will hate me la. And when, when they hate me right, then they will do all sorts of things Like even the Texta Toxic Bull, got people want to like punch, threaten me la. Like want to beat me up, want to attack me. Yeah, so for me, I, I'm quite used to this really la. Like, like being attacked. Like you see, I, I, I just, I just, uh, pick up the call and talk to the person or I, I roughly know what is happening already is that people just want to uh, disturb me so 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 be it uh, after sometimes it will die off one uh. maybe a few days I keep getting the spam call but after that it will die off one uh. so so no choice uh. that's why it's very dangerous uh, when you all say oh like uh, want to be my friend then I meet you in person ask me uh, exchange contact number or Example, you all ask me like, oh, master can meet up or not, uh, or have the telegram group. That's why I, I don't want to do that. So far, uh, I only give my number is that those I go like hiking in the park, that I meet the person, that I chat with the person, then he's really my fan. We walk on the, around in the park for half an hour, then I make friends, then I really uh, uh, give my contact number. Yeah, so I hope you all can understand uh, why, why I don't anyhow give my contact number, why I don't meet you all in person. I only do the YouTube and I only do the the Facebook. Yeah, like you see, now I'm still receiving call on my phone. 
I cannot use the the chat on my phone now. That's why I cannot even. Uh, I have to use uh this from here, or to 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 uh, uh chat with you all. Yeah. So I won't change number one. Ah, uh. change change number. Uh, because this number once you have the number right, it's tied to too many of your things already. You cannot change number. But but this is the not the first time got people post my number and attack me already. Yeah. Usually it will happen for a few days uh. Then after that it will die off already uh. I'm, I'm used to it already uh. Cannot be like whole year uh, every day got people call me uh. Yeah. For me right, yes uh, I will go back and ask uh, where where is the post, uh, how people get get the get my number all this. Yeah. Then maybe I'll make a police report or or what. Yeah. Then the police will ask the person uh, to take down the post. Yeah, but a lot of this right, they just attack you anonymously, right? That example, hardware zone forum, investing note. So all these they are keyboard warriors, uh. They they don't use their real name. They just hide behind a keyboard. They don't show their face. Uh, then they just uh steal your information. So if they have your number, they have your address, they will try to do uh very uh nasty things to you, uh. Yeah. So so that's all my sharing for tonight, uh. So sorry that tonight. I was supposed to do uh, more sharing with you all, end up uh, got, got all this incident. We see how it goes. Uh. Hopefully, tomorrow night, uh, they, they don't have uh, any more problems. Oh. So that's all my sharing for tonight. Uh, take care, everyone. Oh, take care. Thanks all for the support. Hopefully, tomorrow night onwards, things will be better. Take care all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.